Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and in today's podcast we're going to talk about Factory Talk View Machine Edition. Now version 10 was just released last week but we're going to get to that tomorrow. Today we're going to talk about what was new in version 9 and um, the reason we're going to review this is because at the time it came out right around uh, last year right at the beginning of 2017 I actually didn't have a license for it. I don't have a support contract so the latest version I had was 8.2 so I really didn't have the software to actually look at it and try it out and, and see what uh, features it has. But now that I do have it and I'm actually filming a Factory Talk View SE course, I thought it would make sense to go through and take a look at what new features were added with version 9. And then we'll look at version 10 tomorrow. So with that, let's go ahead and get started here. Here you can see the official release notes from AB.com. And uh, when it comes down to the system requirements, nothing big here. Intel Core 2 Duo running at 2.66 gigahertz, four gigs of RAM. Uh, you know, not really a very hefty requirement there. And then software requirements, you can see, uh, you know, Windows 7 Pro, Enterprise Ultimate, Windows 8, Enterprise Pro, Windows 8.1, Enterprise Pro, Windows 10, Enterprise Pro, um, and then some server operating systems, 2008, 2012. So the big thing here is support for version 10. That's what we got with the version 9 of Factory Talk Machine Edition as far as operating systems. And that's uh, probably the biggest one because, you know, I had students back in 2016 telling me they could not find a laptop without Windows 10. So it was very much needed that official support. Now, uh, moving on to uh, new features, the first one listed here is an alarm identifier. And that basically is a property of an alarm that allows you to identify an alarm message. Now, if you've used View32 or View SC, you're very familiar with this concept. It's nice to have it inside of uh, View Machine Edition as well. Now, in addition to that, they added the ability to change the pop-up input color settings. So this would be like on a keypad or keyboard or character input, you can actually change the input color settings. Now, if you don't know, this used to be a global setting and it was kind of well, it was kind of frustrating not to have this feature in the software, but now it's there. And uh, we can also see, and this is a great usability feature, that they added persistent version and language settings when you create a runtime file. So you know the first time you create a runtime, it defaults to whatever version you're in, let's say version 9. But then when you go to make another one and another one and another one, which you do because you're constantly during development, you know, you're making runtimes, you're downloading them too, your uh, panel view and testing them out. And inevitably, you would forget to change it, you would download it, and it wouldn't run because you made the runtime for the wrong version. Well, now, starting with version 9, it'll remember after your first creation of a runtime, it'll remember what that setting was. So that's really cool. They also added an option to persist the RS Lynx Enterprise configuration for a runtime application. In other words, if in Factory Talk View Machine Edition, you edit a device shortcut, right, or a driver, you'll now be prompted, hey, do you want to save that in the runtime file? So this is something you're doing not in View Studio, but you're doing in Machine Edition Station. Another new feature is a proper hyperlink animation feature. Now this can only be added to certain uh, drawing objects, but the cool thing about this is you can have it target a, let's say a file, like a PDF, or a web page, or launch a program. And this is great because it's built right into the software. There's no ActiveX you have to use to enable this. Everything's built right in. Now that doesn't mean you should connect your Panel View Plus or your ME station to the internet in production. You should absolutely not do that. But you may have some uh, HTML files that you load on your Panel View or on your ME station that you want to display, or PDFs, or you know uh, other little programs you want to run. So this is great to have that built in. Now, in addition to that, and this is probably one of the biggest features, is support for Logic Designer, that's uh, Studio 5000 version 21 and up, support for extended properties. So that's like a tags min, a tags max, a tags description. This is now natively supported in version 9 and can really save you a lot of time as far as you know developing your application. Now you don't have to put the min and max and all that inside of your HMI tag database. Why even have an HMI tag database if you're using Studio 5000 and Logix, right? So this is a really, really nice addition, something we've been waiting for 
ever since we got extended properties in uh, like 10 versions ago in Studio 5000. So uh, kudos to them for getting that in there. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are using this already. It's really cool. And finally, for new features, we have the data communication inhibit bit. This is something we've been asking for for a very long time. And why would you want that? Why would you want to be able to inhibit a shortcut or a uh, controller, right? Well, if you take a system down for troubleshooting, if you take, let's say your piano is talking to five different programmable controllers and one of them needs to go down to be troubleshot or serviced or whatnot, wouldn't it be great if you could disable that first so you don't get all these error messages and, you know, really slow down the network because views trying to find out, hey, where are all these tags? Where do they all go? So this is a great feature and I know it's going to make a lot of people happy. Now, aside from these new features, they also added some enhanced features. Let's take a look at those. And here we have, uh, they extended the restrictions on the PanelView Plus 7 standard. So you know the PanelView Plus 7 standard is really a PanelView Plus 7 compact that has that limitation, used to have the limitation of 25 graphic displays and 200 alarms. Well, now they've updated it. So not only do you still get your 25 graphic displays replace style, you also get 25 on top display. So if you want to use some of those plant PAX uh, pop-ups or other pop-ups you design yourself, you can actually have 25 in your project at one time in addition to your 25 displays. So that's cool. And then the alarms go up to 500, which is great. Um, another thing you can do in version nine, which I've talked to some people in the field and they really like, is the ability to actually have multiple graphics start up when you start your project. So if you remember before nine, we could only choose one graphic display to open when our project started. But now you can choose up to five graphic displays. And that's, that, you know, that's pretty awesome. Especially if you're using something like the Data Store Plus ActiveX that you have to leave up in a window like off the side of the screen running all the time. This really helps with things like that. Some of the other things they did is they enhanced the installation, which I really like. It's very smooth and easy to do now. And they also uh, support the new version of Kepware 5.19. No word as to what's new in Kepware 5.19, but uh, they support it now. Great. So now let's go to corrected anomalies. What did they correct? Well, there were some issues in version 8 that uh, they fixed in version 9, including a lot of issues with that ME chalk control object. So this would cause factory talk view to hang or stop responding. And they're saying they fixed that all in version nine. There was also an issue where if you had an informational, a local message and you created it at a runtime, the message may not be saved. So they fixed that as well. And uh, they even had an issue on the panel view plus six that it would stop responding. If you exited an application, you get this uh, pop-up that says unloading application and uh, it would just become unresponsive. So now that's been resolved as well. Nobody wants their PanelView Plus 6 crashing because of uh, a bug. And then this is a really, I'm glad they went back and fixed this because this can be a real, real pain. So let's say you restored an 8.1 MER to project using 8.2. And then you went to open the project with 8.1. Guess what? You wouldn't be able to. For some reason, 8.2 would mark it as being newer even though it wasn't new it was still an old 8.1 project so they fixed that and uh, that's pretty huge for anybody who's run into that it's really painful and the last issue they resolved i didn't even know about this one but it's pretty bad when you installed the uh, factory talk view was removing the aerial bold font from the operating system not good not good so that's fixed too thank goodness um, there are still a list of known anomalies. If you want to know what those are, uh, check out the release notes over at ab.com. Just go to product compatibility section and uh, search on Factory Talk View Machine Edition, and you can get a copy of these notes yourself. And with that, that's it for today. Now, if you found this helpful, please consider giving me a like and a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of these videos published, please support us over at patreon.com forward slash automation. For a $1 monthly donation, we'll give you $3 of downloads over at theautomationexchange.com. And if you know anybody who's looking to master Factory Talk View, send them over to theautomationschool.com. That's where I spend my days creating courses and answering student questions on Factory Talk View, Studio 5000, and more. And with that, I want to thank you for listening. Until next time, peace.